three words. Um, Edouard Glissant, Glissant uses this concept of the donner avec. He rejects the idea of understanding or comprehension as a way of creating a space for togetherness. The philosophical point of understanding is one gets to establish the ground and then everybody else has to set their knowledge on top of it and everything that's acceptable within the underlying frame is understandable and everything else has to fall off. That's how most of our reconciliation works. We find the places of common agreement. Or comprehension, which is with taking, the Latin phrase with taking, comprehend we, with taking, which means that as long as your ideas can be incorporated inside of a framework that I've already established, then that's fine. Both of those are rejected. Instead of those, donner avec, which is kind of this French notion of to give with, we create together. We have a mutual construction of meaning making, a mutual practice of meaning making. And so it's the donner avec that's going to be our process. That process then means that it's got to be a lot more verb, a lot more relational than noun based. This next concept is a Buddhist concept of the Boucheau, um, which is to say that there is a Buddha nature that exists in everyone. The capacity for full revelation exists in everyone. There's a light, the Quakers say there is the light of Christ in all. We look for that. And then this final one, which I love, is intellecti or intellecti. The intellecti is to suggest that in every one of us, in every individual and group, already present is the fully expressed, um, fully expressed possibility. So inside of an acorn, it's not just the acorn that's there, but what's already present is the possibility of old growth oak. How would we relate to one another from our old growth oakness? No matter how much of an acorn you're acting like, how do I relate to you in the space of your old growth oakness? How do I operate for myself from that space, that wise space, that strong space, that discovered space of the old growth oakness? And the reason that that aligns very much with our Christian uh, theology is in order to get from acorn to old growth oak, you have to get broken open. There has to be both death and resurrection. There's got to be a burial, and then there's got to be a coming back. There's got to be a darkness and then a rising. And that rising comes as water and sun. And so is it possible that we could see one another and relate inside of our old growth oakness, our intellecti? And this is the story. A friend reminds me that we are actually right now moving from humanity 2.0 to humanity 3.0. Humanity 1.0, just as a catch up, was uh, clan based, earth bound. We worshiped the feminine. We worshiped everything that gave shelter and produced, but it was a very localized awareness. Humanity 2.0 has been about extracting and commodifying and hierarchy and production, and so it's produced militarism and consumerism and a certain level of patriarchy and power over and binaries. Everything is this or that, evil and good and. Uh, and so we're moving now to humanity 3.0, to a relational-based, network-based, asset-based Ubuntu, um, a quantum independent earthbound connectedness where all uh, are operating in the fullness of their being, in their intellecti. Up to this point, most Christian scripture has been interpreted for us inside of a humanity 2.0 model, but I want to tell you I am certain that era is ending. It's hard to look out and see, but when you see some of the virulentness and everything like that, I, I actually get excited because this is what I know. At the end of their lifespan, bees and wasps sting more often when they know they're about to die. And so what we might be seeing is the stinging. We're experiencing the stinging, but what we know is that's a reflection of the fact that we're moving somewhere. So you can celebrate that. What we know is that when a star is about to give out its last light, its last night comes in the form of a supernova, and so it's really bright. 
The question is, when you look in the sky and you see that really bright, who are you going to believe, Jesus or your lying eyes? That star, by the time the report comes to us where we still see the light of that star, that star has long been burnt out. This world of virulence that we're looking at, it's a dying age. We are already in another age. And so if you don't realize that a relationally constructed space for authentic, dignified, interconnected, legitimate, and performatively co-equal world is already emerging, if, that, if, if the, all that's too complicated, I would ask you to tell this story. The realm of God is at hand. Thank you.